to overexcite you, but we are into game seven now. We are here on Cloud Kingdom. I'm going to introduce these two players for us in the top right position, clinging on, hoping to play as many games as possible. Now, we do have the Red Protoss player. It is Fnatic's Harston. His opponent in the lower left currently 4-2 up. It is, of course, Western Wolves, Zictum Mini. And, well, Harston is going to be fighting right now. Zictum Mini, he's got a little bit of a buffer because he's only got to win one more game and he takes home that prize money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in some situations you might be like, oh, well, in this situation, uh, when you're up 4-2, you can take a risk and do some cheese. But Zictamini is not the kind of player to do that. He is the kind of player to sit back and play another standard game instead of uh, taking risks. He's so confident in his late game and his mid game, his anti-cheese policies that he has. I think we're going to see him just play another normal defensive game. And once again, the... the the choices in this game are going to be Fnatic's Arstums to take. Is he going to expand to a third? Is he going to go for some kind of a two-base timing? When is he going to do it? Where is he going to do it? How is he going to do it? Indeed, that is what we're going to be waiting for. And of course, this is the second game we've played on this map tonight, isn't it? Uh... We played in the... Have we played this map already? I don't think we have. No, this is this is the final map. I'm thinking of the undercard series that we did. So we do have... Obviously, um, this is the last map in the map pool we've got available. So if it does go to two more games, then we'll have to do vetoing for the maps as the two players are discussing at the moment. So, as we can see at the moment, clearly Harston is quite confident this is going to be going to an eighth game. Yeah, uh, hopefully it is going to go to an eighth game. That way uh, we're going to do the vetoes again and we're going to see the most balanced maps in, t in both players' opinions uh, once more. So it's probably going to be another day break in there. I uh, would not be mistaken. Maybe another M2 is going to be seen as well if it gets that far. I really hope it does, but so far the openings have been exactly the same as we've seen uh, throughout the entire series, apart from that one game on M2 where uh, Harstam decided to uh, throw out one of his cannon rushes, which didn't really benefit him much. It didn't indeed. Now, I like the style Harstam goes for with this forge. He goes the pylon in his main, followed by Nexus, then the forge in his main base, rather than completing the wall off. So that is something that can be very interesting. It allows him to get this gateway out of the front, um, and it does leave a small gap in his wall off. So maybe we'll be seeing various things out of him, but again, for the moment, stick to mini. He doesn't know if the forge is down or not. He can assume that it is, but... That kind of guessing work that you leave to your opponent is always going to be awkward for them. But Zikto, he's got his fourth base up now before the four-minute mark, so his economy is going to be thriving should it stay up. Mm -hmm. He's going to have some really good economy uh, to back his strategies up right now. Harstam still playing his standard opening, just getting his uh, first and second guess right now. Zikdomini's naturals finishing up. Overlord getting shot down a little bit by that cannon. Going to be positioning himself a little bit higher on the cliff so the cannon cannot see or reach him. We do have a sneaky deaky probe out of Harstam in, in the bottom part of this map. But Zikdomini, oh, he might be missing this probe. This probe is getting into the third. Oh, is it so? I don't think it was seen. Oh, now it's seen for sure. And this is great by Zikta Mini actually, leaving that Zergling on patrol command in order to be able to pick off this probe. It's something that all Zerg players should be doing is using just the odd Zergling around. I mean, if you're one of the lower league players or even going up to some of the higher leagues and you're worried about aggression when it's coming out, just leave a Zergling on patrol command outside your opponent's natural. Leave mm -hmm. one by the watchtower and leave one by the entrance to your third base. And you'll then always know if any aggression is going to be coming at you. So you can know when to drone and when to produce units, obviously. So a little pro tip for you there. <laughs> yeah, keeping uh, a Zergling on patrol around your third base as it's building, if you don't have an Overlord nearby to provide vision, always a good idea. Even when you do have an Overlord, a Zergling can start working away at that probe immediately, and if any kind of shenanigans is planned by the Protoss player, you can immediately shut that down. And uh, talk about shenanigans, what is Harstam up to in this game? He's dropping down his Robo, then dropping down another gas. He's going to uh, three gas once more, so we... Uh, I don't know. Could see a straight up uh, Immortal Sentry push uh, as his last ditch effort to stay alive in the Shomet series. It could be. We see that there are three probes in each gas, so he's not doing that two probes in each shenanigans that, that he was, of course, doing in previous games. We do have the robotics facility coming down. Zikta Mini, yet again, has got this rotor on very early, and it's at a time when he got that around six minutes. Usually, you see Zerg players grab up the rotor on an evolution chamber simultaneously 
or at least in very close succession at around the kind of 6.30 to 7 minute mark. So maybe going for some early roaches, as we've seen before, already quite a few zerglings in production here for Zikta Mini. So going for an aggressive strategy straight away, which is something that a lot of Zerg players do shy away from. Hmm, yeah, only 49 workers and a lot of Zerglings in production right now. Uh, Zikta Mini might be misreading Harstam's build here a little bit. Arstam is not going to be planning to move out anytime soon. Those links are definitely a bit premature. And of course, Ictamini is not going to be able to do anything himself either. He's going to be a uh, supply block big time, by the way. Three overlords now coming out. But it's going to be a long while before he can uh, resume his drone production. And that's exactly what he needs. Drones, drones, drones is what he needs because his drone count is definitely a little bit behind right now. It is indeed, and with Chrono Boost, if they were going off on the Nexus, that would be great news. But we see here, Hart, um, Hartson is getting up three, now four additional gateways. That will take him up to a great count of, I do believe, seven. With the robotics facility, that is an all-in position. You cannot take a third base with their many production structures. But Zygtomini doing a good job of clearing out the proxy pylon down at the bottom right of the map. So that denies Harston those quick, easy warp-ins. So we may be seeing one more Immortal come out, and then the warp prism is already queued up, as I thought. So, yeah, this is all looking good. Zygtomini going for the Spire yet again, though, and that's a late Spire to defend this. Loads of Spine Call is getting thrown down here, though, at the natural of Zygto. Yeah, Zygtomini sees there's no third base on the way at this point. He realizes it's got to be another two base all in, and he would be right into assuming so. There's a lot of Zerglings here, and a single Roach, just to keep them company. The pylon has gone up to block this off, and an additional cannon is being constructed. Zygtomini runs in there, Harstam retreats. Buying every second is a value valuable for Zygtomini right now. He's got nine, ten spines on the way in his natural. Indeed, his third base almost certainly going to go down though, that's the problem, but all Zyktamini's doing is he's attempting to buy time for that Spire to get down, so he will be able to get out a lot of Mutalisks. That is essentially what he needs to do, and as long as he can achieve that, he should be fine. Now, we see here Hastam actually moving back for the moment, so again, delaying this push even more for the time being. The Overlord's seeing all of this, and as a result, this is delaying the push and buying Zyktamini the time he needs. That Spire is nearly finished, Lurlian. Mm -hmm. The spire is about to finish up. How many mutas can be produced? About uh, nine or ten can be, can be produced at once uh, because so many minerals of Zyktamini have been put into the spine crawler. He cannot immediately produce the 12 or 13 that he would like to. There they come out on a production tab. Nine of them. Arstam sees the amount of spine crawlers, realizes, okay, I'm going to have to kill a third and defend against the mutas. And there, immediately, the Twilight Council goes down. Great reaction out of Arstam, but is it going to be in time? Is he going to have enough. Uh, Stalkers in time, are they going to have the right upgrades and will he have Blink in time to to help him defend? Well, he is indeed going to need to get out a lot more Stalkers. He's got a good amount of Guardian Shields. I think the choice of taking out the third and then running is good because as long as he can defend against the Mutalisks, Harstam is in a great spot because ultimately, Zyktamini's lost his third base. He's chucked down an awful lot of Spine Crawlers. I think it's about 14 at least. And therefore, he has got far fewer drones. He's got far fewer minerals than he needed, and as a result, he's got far fewer muters than he could have had by his gas earlier on. So all Hassan's got to do now is hold off and take his third at a leisurely pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he has to do that. There's so many spine crawlers that any kind of aggressive you know, mid-game timing is not really going to work out because there's going to be seven spines at the natural and seven spines at the third base. So taking a third himself is going to be the best option for Harmston and Harstam right now as he is taking uh, Blink right now. Chrono boosting it out as fast as he, uh, as, he fa as fast as he can. He's going to need upgrades, Blink, and maybe even a few Storms or Archon, uh, Archons on the field if Zyktomini continues his uh, muta production. Well, I don't know if you saw the Mutas did come and try and poke in actually there, mm -hmm. but the cannons and the Stalkers were able to push them back, and this is going to be problems because there are now three cannons in production, and as we can see, the Stalkers here, Blink, nearly finished, another Chrono Boost would be great on that just to rush it out, but Zyktomini certainly looking to be in trouble for the moment because even though he's got up his third base again now, the drone count isn't great, only 57 of them, and it's still very vulnerable because most of the ground defense is in the form of those spine crawlers and if they don't start moving which actually now they are starting to move across to the third it's going to be problems but as we can see we've got a very large force here by Harstam. Mm -hmm. Harstam has got a very sizable force what is Zyktamini going to hope to do against it? He's just harassing with his mutas right now. He's done with the muta phase. He will be transitioning out of that in a second. Going to be killing the cannon. He will be able to kill a few probes here. Ah, oh, not even a few. Just one probe falling there. But any kind of damage that he can do with his mutas is good at this point. He's pretty much forfeited 
them right now. They're harassment units and defensive units for the next five minutes, and after that they become pretty obsolete as the hive is going to be finishing up. Indeed they do. Halston getting down that Dark Shrine, ready to get DTs out, of course, for the Archons. He may send one or two over Zictum in his way, trying to catch him off guard, but the Archons really spelled the end for the Mutalist phase. But look at this coming into the natural base, Lurlian. So many Mutas there. The cannons aren't finished. The double cancel goes down. The blink in, though, will mean that most of those probes get away safe still. Zictum not getting the amount of kills he needs on those Mutas. But behind this, he's taking his fourth and fifth base, so he's trying to catch up in terms of his economy, knowing that his third base being down for so long will have hurt him. But he's up to that 73 drone, uh, drone mark. He's got Infestors coming out, and he's got his Hive nearly done. It's starting to level out. It, it indeed is. Uh, I think uh, the situation is quite equal right now, and if Harstam doesn't do any kind of damage in the next minute, I think uh, Zictamini is going to be in a really good position. He's now at 80 workers, is going to have four bases immediately saturated, has a fifth base on the way that can be used as uh, a gas mining base and a bit of a macro hatch to provide more larvae. He's in an amazing position. He has hive. He has the Great Aspire now on the way, and Harstam is going to have to uh, do something. He's going to either have to hit a timing, or he's going to go into uh, the motherships and the or void rays or you know any kind of counter to the brute lords. Indeed. What, so, what are you expecting to see out of Harstam here? Do, do you think he's going to hit a timing before they're out, or do you think he's going to go into void rays, uh, fleet beacon, mothership, yada yada yada? He's going to, in my opinion, have to go towards the Fleet Beacon option because his third base is getting very defended with these cannons. There are some speedlings running in now, but of course the army's there. He won't be able to get over to his opponent's base and actually deal the damage he needs to before those Broodlords start coming out. I mean, there's only 40 seconds until that Great Aspire is finished. The Corruptor's already on their way. So, to be honest, he's got to sit back and wait. He's got to start taking up. But Zikta Mini, at the same time, he's getting Adrenal Glands out for those speedlings, which are going to be so strong when we look and see that there are no Colossi on the field. And we're seeing straight away now, they're picking up these cannons very fast. They're being aggressive. Zictimini maxed out. He's got a lot of minerals, so he can afford to throw them away. And Lurlian, this is going to be frustrating for Harstam. Yeah, Harstam is doing a lot of counter damage, though. There's DTs everywhere across the map, harassing every base of Zictimini. And he's taking out all the mutas at the same time. This is looking quite all right. For Harstam, all of a sudden, the DTs are slowly starting to get cleaned up, but there's still a lot of drones not mining. Uh, eight uh, workers killed by Zictimini in this game versus six of Harstam. So Harstam taking out six workers there and preventing a lot of mining time. And this counterattack is going to be scary. The Brulards are not out on the field just yet. Six of them are on the way. Are they going to be out on the field in time? This fourth base is definitely going to go down. Zictimini once again going to be fighting to keep his third alive. Now... For some reason, Harstam pushing up straight into those spine crawlers, which is not a good decision. Immediately pushing into what is a lot of aggression. That's going to make it difficult. Now the Brutals are finished as well. The speedlings are streaming in, and I just, I cannot believe that Harstam walked so many stalkers straight into that damage. Wants to take out this third base, and is then just going to retreat out. That's his only real option. But of course, the speedlings there, the Broodlords, and the Broodlings starting to come in. And all of this army for Harstam is getting taken out. He may get the fourth base, but with the Broodlords there, he's in serious problems. Mm -hmm. He's in some serious problems right now. Has taken out two bases though. Is that going to be enough? He also took out the fifth in the bottom right with a DT. So all of a sudden, Zictimini down to only two base income. And he's going to have to reconstruct all those hatcheries. Uh, DT is still left alive. Still doing the, uh, well, doing some damage. Might be able to take the horror, the extractor out, but it's not going to happen. Overseer plus the Broodlord show up. And this is a scary army right now. 10 Broods and 50 Lings versus an Archon and 13 Stalkers. That's the situation right now in Meadows. It was a bold move. I don't think Harstam realized those Broodlords were coming. And no. as a result, I just don't understand why he rushed into all of those spine crawlers. He lost so much stuff there before he even managed to pick off the hatchery. God, he overcommitted himself, in my opinion. And now this counterattack is going to be a complete nightmare to hold. Harstam actually trying to take a fourth Nexus right now. And there's just no way that's <laughs> going to work. He should be able to know the this counter-attack is coming in. So many Broodlords are there, and the cancel may... Oh, it does just go down, I was going to say. May not, with so many Broodlords there. But as you can see, only a handful of Stalkers and the Archon. But all the Zerglings, all the Broodlords and the Investors, this is going to be tough for Harstem to hold. Yeah, it's going to be near impossible for, for him to hold here. He has to cancel the fourth base immediately. There's some links in the main base, nibbling away at the Dark Shrine and some pylons. 
And Harstam is going to try to make the Miracle defense here. There's not that many supporting units yet, but here come the Zerglings. The Infestors are going to be hitting their Fungals. And it looks like Zygdomini is going to be able to take this Showmatch series 5-2 to two over the Dutch Protoss player. Harstam, well played. <laughs> it is what Harstam throws out.